Hello everyone, this is MZ here and I'm super excited today to share this project with you. Um, I've created some templates for the Zentangle Project Pack 21, which was all about botanical tangles. And as you all know, I am crazy about those. I have a couple of books on Amazon that just focus on organic and botanical tangles. So I thought this would be a great little guide to make where we could record our artwork uh, and the way we use several tangles together to create flowers. Uh, you can also use this if you just want to doodle flowers and make it look like a field guide. If you draw intricate bot botanicals, um, this printout will be available on my website and the printing instructions will be in a blog post again that is linked um, below because I've printed mine on 7 by 10 paper because I wanted them to be 5 by 7. I didn't want um, a very large size. I wanted it to feel like a vintage field guide. So um, I did that. You can do A4. Um, you can print them smaller if you want also. Uh, but I suggest this size. Don't go smaller than this because otherwise the space that you have in the middle uh, to draw might not be enough. But again, totally up to you. Take a couple of test prints on different paper and then see what you want to do from there. This video is going to be all about how I'm going to be binding these and using these cards. So the blog post below will give you printing instructions and also a link to the download for this template as well as this book cover uh, I've made if you want to use it. So I'm going to do this video with no edits. I've been making um, fewer videos because of all of the editing stuff and it just it, it used to become like a big deal uh, i have resolved that i will now be um i will let the mistakes go and i will just do a zero edit video so that at least i can get um this fun content out to all of you okay so enough talking let's um discuss what we are going to do in this video so this is the way you will find the printable uh, I did this, like I told you, on 7 by 10 paper. You can do it on A4 paper. I did double-sided prints, right? And then I folded them down the middle, five sheets at a time. So these are five sheets, these are five sheets, and these are five sheets. So when I fold five sheets, it gives me 10 pages, right? And so this is one signature for the book that I want to bind. All I did was, and I mean, you can also um, look up bookbinding videos on YouTube. I'm doing a very simple bookbinding uh, technique. It's the pamphlet stitch, three hole pamphlet stitch. It just got three holes in here. And then I use this as a guide and put the other signatures, aligned them and then went through those as well. So that all my holes are aligned. I'm gonna try and show you here as you can see like that and like that. Then I went ahead and I took my card and as you can see, I cut it. I haven't left much of an overhang on any side. So all of these are, if this is five by seven, this will probably be 5.5 by 7.5, this end. And then this is half an inch that I've left for the spine. And again, I lined up the paper like that I made lines where the holes are and I made three holes, one for each signature. And as I bind this, it will become, um, you know, um, it will become clearer uh, what I'm doing with that. But this was um, just card from a sketchbook, a sketchbook, a watercolor sketchbook that I cut up and used to print these. So these are all printed on watercolor paper. Now you can do them on any kind of paper, but I feel like if we do it on watercolor paper it'll just give us more freedom to you know play with different mediums maybe um while we're doing our art and it's not going to bleed through or have any other uh, issue also i kind of like the texture of watercolor paper um the other side is planar but that's fine with me uh, i'm good with one side textured and one side plain i didn't want to leave the other side um blank but again if that is something you prefer you could leave the other side blank as well so this card piece came from that sketchbook and basically all i did was i went in and i measured the size that i wanted for the covers drew around it and left a half an inch spine in the middle 
and then I just went over it once with a cutter. I did not go all the way through so that I have this nice spine and the book bends well. So this is one way that I'm going to store these cards and make like a little field guide. There are easier ways and I'm just going to talk about those and then we will come and we will assemble um, all three of them and I will, sorry, both of them and then I will try and speed that up so that you don't have to suffer me talking for 10 minutes through binding. So another way that you can keep them is just like cards. Um, just print them out, cut them out and keep them and you can make them single sided if you want. Uh, you can make them double sided if you want. So this is just something that you can keep in your dangling stash and just, you know, as in when you want one, you pull one out and you use it. The other way is to just create like a notepad. So instead of binding in the on the sides like I did with the, uh, with the other book, uh, instead of creating signatures, just take a few of these cards, right? And I have left enough of a space at the top that you can take two book boards. Again, this was the other side of that sketchbook. Cut them out to size and then just have them spiral bound at the top. Now, if you want them spiral bound on the side, you can also do that. But just make sure that it's not very deep because there is one side that has a larger margin than the other. So if you see over here, this is a larger margin than this one, and this is the side that you want to bind. See that? So I suggest binding it at the top because I think that's like the safest way to go. But if you want, you can also bind it around the side, and then that will give you uh, a spiral bound book. I'm using tea dyed paper to cover my book cover so that this has like a bit of a edge a bit of a border I'm going to do that with both the books and then I'm using some scrapbook paper as end paper for the inside now you can also go ahead and just use something a little fancier for the cover instead of using tea dyed paper but I feel like the tea dyed paper really looked very authentic and I wanted to go with that. So let's get started. Okay, so just a note over here because um, I had cut 
the spine uh, out of the same piece of board and these are not three different pieces um, it is a bit of a challenge getting the paper in the groove and just make sure you have enough glue um, that the paper does stick in the groove otherwise this won't stay flat it'll um, bubble up and so that when you open the book if you can see the paper um, kind of stays in the grooves and it doesn't bunch up and the spine opens perfectly so just make sure that you have enough glue in the ridges in here and then around here as well now i'm just going to cut the sides leaving a little bit of space i'm not very good at this step i always tend to leave my corners exposed but this is just supposed to be a journal for me to enjoy, so I'm not obsessing over the perfection of it. And I just want it to look nice and vintage. So again, with the bone folder, I'm just going to go make a crease and then press it down. Again, you want to make sure that it adheres to the side. Let me just press this here. And as you can see, this now gives a very nice, neat finish to the edge. I'm crazy about making books, which is why I'm going to um, these lengths to create like a field guide but like i said you can even just use the printables as cards or just have them ring bound but i'm going to show you how to prep the covers for the ring bound version as well so that you have a bit of the field guide look even if you don't want to do the binding and you just want to you know, take it to a local stationery shop and have it bound. So there we have it. That's the cover, right? And now on the inside, I want to put this beautiful paper. And for that, I'm just going to roughly mark where I need to cut, which is here and here so i'm just going to cut this and be right back okay i'm back and i've cut the paper down now again using the glue make sure that i have it all around the edges and also some extra glue where the spine is. So there we go. And before I do that, just quickly, I'm going to make these holes again because otherwise I won't be able to see them from either side. So do not forget that. There we are. I'm just eyeballing this to make sure that I've left the same amount of space all around. Now, I really want to go in with that bone folder and make sure that This is adhered well, especially around that spine area. And now I'm going to let it dry just a little bit, but very slowly I'm also going to start working the paper so that it knows where to bend. You want to be careful, you don't want to tear your paper which is why we want a lot of glue here because 
we want the board and the paper to be like one and the same as you can see over here it's coming up and so I'm just gonna put more glue in there and then let it dry a little bit I'm going to come around the other side because I have the guides for the holes over here I'm just going to poke them in two three one two three Okay, so now we're going to start with our binding. We're going to take the first signature and through the middle hole, you just want to take your needle and thread, leave a little bit of a tail here. And then this is going to be hard to see on camera, but this is the third hole. Uh, probably easy to see it on this side. This is like the middle hole, but the last one, the third one. Go through there and then back up through the top and then again back up through the top here as well now we want to go down the bottom hole and out from here it's going to be much easier for you to see on this side and now we want to go in from this hole over here but make sure that you're not splitting the thread that you've already put in and so at this point I would suggest that you loosen up the binding and very carefully go back through that hole now as you can see this is what i wanted to guard against but it's good that this has happened so that i can show you what to do as you can see my thread is stuck in the middle so i'm just going to go back and make sure that it is unstuck there we go so basically what you want is your middle thread then the tail that you left which is over here on one side and then this on the one on the other side then you pull them both very carefully because you don't want to tear anything and over here you check that it's taut now you have these two strings on either side and you just make a knot and then you cut off the rest. Now I'll do this once again. Now with the next hole, which is the middle hole. So again, we start in the center with the center hole. And you can go ahead and make sure that all your holes are wide enough by using this awl. It's a book binding tool or you can use any other pokey tool just to make it easier for you to do the binding again I'm leaving a tail here going up on top and through there having the holes bigger does make it much easier then same way at the bottom Make sure that you don't use the first hole. We are in the middle one, which is the second one. And again, back through the center. And this time, I managed to not split any thread. So again, tighten it up a little bit. extra thread here I think yeah just make sure you've tightened it up check the other side is everything nice and taut 
if something needs to be pulled pull it and again two knots and cut i leave a little bit of a tail because i don't want it coming apart it usually doesn't but i just want to be safe rather than sorry and as you can see now we're at the front of the book and we've got one signature left so i'll do this once again um i did not speed any of this up though i thought that i would because if you're doing this for the first time it's good to maybe see it a few times there we go now the top and i think this is the best view to show so my needle is coming through here and then the page is here and again it makes a world of a difference if you go in and you make your hole slightly bigger so maybe do that in the beginning there we go just make sure that this tail doesn't go through we don't want to lose it again i'm sorry if i'm slightly out of frame this is hard to do on camera so now again we're just coming back through the middle hole and there are so many videos on youtube that are way better than what i've managed to do so if you're at all confused just i mean type in three hole pamphlet stitch and the experts will show you how it's done so there we go i'm going to put this under some um, heavy books because of the watercolor paper inside it's kind of resistant to the to the spines and the creases so you can just put it overnight under heavy books and it should be fine but before i move on to the next cover i just wanted to show you that this is where i want to position this and then maybe add some other field labels um maybe some corners book corners but basically this is how the binding is done so there's that i will post finished pictures on the blog and now we come to this notebook which is going to be way simpler okay just going to cut this through the middle because these are two separate pieces of paper and we are just spiral binding them that makes this process much much easier so if you just want something functional that's easier to do i would suggest go with this method again get the corners I'm using tea dyed paper um, you could also use cloth uh, I've done some books where I've bound uh, the book in velvet so that's fun so I mean there's the possibilities with these field guides are really endless and such a fun idea to play with art angles like that so and now we will have a nice home to keep them in so as you can see all good here and you can just put your cover like that um, the other side will also be covered the same way the back but one thing that we are missing is the paper for this on the inside so 
I'm just going to cut this with a scissor. And I'm cutting it a little smaller than the actual board. So then you cover the inside like that. And this video is already very, very long. So you will just repeat the process for the other board. One will be in front and one will be at the back. your cards will come like this and you will spiral bind from the top and add your book cover so these are the ways where that i'm you know keeping my cards again like i said you can do anything that you want the printables and the instructions on how to print are linked below in my blog post this video was just to show you the way i've bound them and i will also share videos of the finished uh, spiral bound uh, notebook as well as this little field guide where I still want to go ahead and put a few decorative touches so be sure to check out the blog post below I hope you guys have a great day bye bye okay so I thought I'd pop back in and show you what I did and how I finished my journals now I like things to be full and busy which is why I went in and put in some field labels. I added these corners to the bound book. Um, went and put in a little gold die cut because I like some bling. And this is what I did to the notepad. It's going to be bound across the top. So just thought I would show you that. Um, this still needs to go under some heavy books so that the paper is trained to stay shut but other than that yeah this is this is what i have and i hope you enjoyed this project